Hey everyone, it's Kong again with a very special episode of Should You Summon. Over the past few months, this new Heart's Requital Oathworn Summon has become a regular fixture of the banner rotation, coming around during the second week of each major update. This banner is slightly different than the Beginner's Wishlist banner. It features all the SSR heroes from Langrisser 1, 2, and 3, and it doesn't guarantee that you'll get your wishlisted heroes after a certain number of summons. Once you make your selections, it's a normal raid up banner, which means you have a 40% chance to get each targeted hero and a 20% chance to get a random off banner unit. I've seen a large number of new players on Discord, Reddit, Facebook, and YouTube asking about whether they should summon on this. I'm not going to do my usual detailed breakdowns for every single character here, but instead I will give a quick summary of the things these characters actually do for your team, and what kind of person you have to be to consider summoning for them. I'll also give you a nice handy quick reference summary at the end, so stay tuned for that. And if you're interested in more details on a specific hero, you can check out my previous normal episodes of Should You Summon in the playlist. Dehart is a physical DPS. He's a member of the Protagonists, Origins of Light, and Meteor Strike factions. This gives you the option of running a Protagonist team buffed by Matthew, or an Origins team with Freya as your faction buffing tank. Dehart does also have his own faction buff for Origins of Light if needed, but if you're running Origins you should be running Freya anyway. He also has access to an SP class later in the game. If you are interested in PvP, he is a meta-relevant unit in his SP class. He unlocks a lot of bonds for other heroes. The main relevant ones are Freya, Luna, Sophia, and Tiaris, so if you want those heroes at full power you need D-Heart eventually. Luna is a physical DPS, and her 3 cost skill gives certain allies a mobility boost when they move through her aura. She's a member of the Origins of Light, Princess Alliance, and Strategic Masters factions. If you're running Luna, it's most likely going to be with Freya as your tank. Freya can buff her, or Luna can bring her own Princess Faction buff. She unlocks a couple of bonds, most notably the solid free unit Luin, and she's overall a general purpose PvE unit. Ultimuler is a physical DPS. You'll see that he has a guard skill, but he's really not best used as a tank. He's a member of the Empire's Honor, Strategic Masters, and Dark Reincarnation factions. He also has a faction buff for Strategic Masters, which means he can pair quite nicely with the free tank Vargas. He does have access to an SP class later in the game, but it's not a priority build. He also unlocks a couple of bonds for not super important units. Overall, another general purpose PvE unit. Tiaris is one of the two OP healers on this banner, and one of the best PvE healers in the game. Why is she so good? She applies a buff on your tank that automatically heals them after combat, so they can stand there taking many more hits before dying. Chances are you already summoned a healer on your original Beginner's Oathsworn banner, but if you didn't, it's a good idea for one of your selections here to be a healer. She's a member of Protagonists, Origins of Light, and Princess Alliance, but your faction doesn't really matter as much for your healers. She unlocks the bond that boosts Dehart's attack, so if you're considering wishlisting him, you'll probably want to make sure you have her as well. Betty is not really a real tank. She's more of a reactive unit that punishes area of effect attacks. Even though that sounds useful, she's not really useful in PvE, and she only appears in the most dedicated niche teams in PvP. Under no circumstances should you wishlist her here. Gerald and Layla are a weird combination of physical and magical DPS and off-healing. Have you ever heard the expression, Jack of all trades, master of none? That applies to them. They can be pretty good as a supportive unit in PvE, but there are generally better options for more dedicated roles in your team, so you don't need to wishlist them here. Jugler is designed as a tank, but he's not really that great at that anymore. In PvP, he's an aggressive area of effect unit, and in PvE, his main job is to heal the rest of your team a bit after getting hit. A real tank and a real healer will take you much farther in the game, so I don't recommend newer players to wishlist him. Like Tiaris, Liana is the other OP healer on this banner. Why is she so good? She's one of the only units in the game with a skill that grants an additional action to another party member. Kind of like a dancer in the Fire Emblem games. 
This is a good option to pair with an aggressive ally to allow them to output big DPS twice. She's a member of the protagonists Legion of Glory and Princess Alliance factions, but as I mentioned it doesn't really matter as much if your healer is part of your main faction. She unlocks the bond that boosts Elwyn's attack power, and he's one of the most recommended units to start with in the early game, so if you have him or you're thinking of wishlisting him here, Liana is also a great choice. Lana is a magical DPS who has a mix of single target and area of effect spells. She also has a slightly longer range than other basic mages when she's casting her spells. She's a member of the Princess Alliance and Dark Reincarnation factions, so she's most likely going to be run in a team with Luna or Bozal to start. She also has access to an SP class upgrade later in the game. Overall, she's a very solid PvE unit if you're looking for a magical option. Bernhardt is a physical DPS. Like Ultimuller, you'll see that he has a guard skill, but he's not best to run as your tank. He's a member of the Empire's Honor, Dark Reincarnation, and Mythical Realm factions. He carries a faction buff for Empire's Honor, which means he pairs quite nicely with the free tank Vargas. He's a good general purpose PvE unit. His mobility is a little low, but that's probably not a problem if you're hanging out with your tank anyway. Empire-based PvE teams will usually involve Leon as well, so bringing the faction buff on Bernhardt frees up another skill slot on Leon. Speaking of which, Leon is one of the game's poster boy DPS units. He's quite mobile and can retreat a few spaces after attacking, giving you lots of tactical flexibility. He's a member of the Empire's Honor and Strategic Masters factions, so he pairs quite nicely with the free tank Vargas as well. If you don't have Bernhardt, Leon can bring a faction buff for Empire's Honor as well. In fact, even if you run another faction, Leon can usually fit in because his chivalry skill gives him a strong buff to make up for not getting the faction power. He also has access to an SP class later in the game, and if you're interested in PvP, he is a meta-relevant unit in his SP class. Bozal is a magical DPS and debuffer. He's a member of the Dark Reincarnation and Mythical Realm factions, and he carries the faction buff for Dark Reincarnation, so he can be pretty self-sufficient, whichever kind of team you want to use him in. He unlocks some bonds for other important heroes, the most notable being Ares, Bernhardt, and Waytham, so if you want those heroes at full power, you're going to want Bozal eventually. He's a very useful unit in PvE, where his magic and debuffs can help against some of the bosses you'll face in the Secret Realm while you're progressing through towards the endgame. Cherie is a physical DPS who can get a second action on her turn if she meets certain requirements. You should be getting her for free from the new account questline, so hopefully you don't need to think about summoning her here. If you do need to summon her for some reason, she's a member of Legion of Glory, Princess Alliance, and Meteor Strike factions, meaning she'll pair well with the free tanks Freya or Grenier if you have someone who's buffing those factions. She also has access to an SP class later in the game, and it is one of the better ones for PvE. If you're interested in PvP, she's commonly on the borderline of meta relevance in her SP class. Elwyn is one of the premier physical DPS units in the game, partly because he also heals himself up after attacking, giving him some good self-sustainability. He's a member of the Protagonists, Legion of Glory, and Empire's Honor factions, so you have lots of good options for teams to drop him into. He also has a faction buff for Legion of Glory, so he could be the unit that you build your team around. He unlocks some bonds for other important heroes, notably Lana and Leon from this banner, so if you want those heroes at full power, you're going to want Elwyn eventually. He also has access to an SP class later in the game, and it's one of the better ones for PvE. Overall, he's a very useful unit who will help defeat many bosses while progressing your account. I put him near the top of the must summon units on this banner. Finally, Leden is a traditional tank. He sits in the enemy danger zone and he waits for the enemy to hit him. He's a member of the Protagonists and Legion of Glory factions, and he has a faction buff for Legion of Glory, so he could be the unit you build your team around. He also has access to an SP class later in the game, which basically slightly improves his existing PvE functionality. Overall, he's a bit outdated. There are other tanks who fit into good PvE factions, like Lightbringer for Legion of Glory and Protagonists, Hilda for Empire's Honor and Languisser Reincarnation, or the free Freya for Princess Alliance and Origins of Light, or even Grenier for Legion of Glory. Leden is fine, but newer players starting the game now have a lot more viable team composition options, so I don't think you need to wishlist him here. 
In summary, I'll say if you didn't already get a healer on your beginner banner, this is the time to secure one. If you've already settled on a main faction, or had the good fortune of getting some strong SSR units on other banners, try to get the most important DPS, faction buffer, or bond unlockers for that faction. Princess Alliance, Legion of Glory, and Empire's Honor have traditionally been very common starting factions. You can usually go far by using one of the free tanks, Freya, Grenier, or Vargas, and one of the excellent healers here, and then add other important on-faction units. For Princess Alliance, that would be Luna and Lana, for example. For Legion of Glory, that would be Elwyn for sure, or Sherry if you missed out on your free copy. For Empire's Honor, that would be Leon, and Elwyn again, and Bernhardt. Bozel is also a good utility pick who can fit into multiple teams. Alright folks, I hope you find these quick summaries helpful in making your decision. The most important thing to remember about this game is that you're not going to paint yourself into a corner with your team building decisions. Any faction can be viable for progressing through the game as long as you pay attention to team composition, and make sure you're always building up your core units. So choosing a faction and selecting units to go in your team should all be part of the fun, don't stress too much. Okay, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions, I'm always happy to answer questions in the comments. I'll also put a link to my Discord in the description. I'll also put a link to the global wiki for the game, so you can do some more in-depth research on each of these characters if you want to. Thanks so much for watching, I'll catch you in the next one. Happy Langrissing, everyone. Extra special thanks, of course, to our Langrisser tier channel members for generously supporting the channel directly. Shout out to Levitt, Derek, Kate Soon, Jared Portela, Jerome Meyer, Harambe, and Shara Ilimerius. Hit the join button there if you're interested in adding your name to these ranks.